Okay. Okay. Talk so I'm fast. just seeing, do you guys see the presentation? Mm -hmm. There it is. Okay. So uh, the, our mission is pretty echoey. The mission of Waste Management Service Department is to properly operate and maintain the collection system infrastructure, transporting and treating wastewater without disruption or overflows, while meeting the needs of Waterloo citizens, protecting surface and groundwater resources, and complying with all federal and state regulations. Uh, our current department has 42 full-time, is budgeted 42 full-time with two seasonal employees or part-time employees. We used to have seasonal. We couldn't get those through temp agencies, so now we've converted to part-time. And those come in in the summer when we can do more work out in the sewer collection system. So that, that's really made a, a big difference, in my opinion, just having those extra employees during the, the warmer months when we can work. Okay, so, excuse me. So having two FTEs is not correct. You now have four part-time? Uh, it is equivalent of two FTEs, roughly. But they're two, four part-time. Actually, we, we get roughly four part-time people that equates to roughly yeah. if they work half-time to two FTEs. Okay. So, Thank you. So what you're going to see in front of you here is our uh, our current department's uh, manning chart. We have 35 employees out of the 42 that are funded by the Sanitary Sewer Fund and seven by the Storm Sewer Fund. Those seven by the Storm Sewer Fund are identified on this in red. You will also notice kind of uh, the, the one black mark on here, so to speak, or the black part, is the fog inspector. Now that person does not work out of our building but is funded by the Sanitary Sewer Fund. That is the fog inspector who works for building inspection services. Now what's happened with the new uh, reorganization, uh, our department is now part of the public works division. And basically all of, uh, all those in red are our employees as part of that new division. So Steve, excuse yes. me. So Steve, the red ones are equivalent to what was in the prior chart. They were all was in the prior chart, but now we're all part of the bigger public works picture. Okay, and what's the position that Brian Rath had? Was that the supervisor vacant position? It is actually the treatment, I'm going back one more, Councilman Morsey, that is the treatment operations supervisor. Brian Bowman now has that permission, per position. Oh, okay. You okay. recently promoted him. Uh, since I've submitted this, there is one change. The operations foreman on the far kind of mid left, you just appointed Brad Manal to that, so there will be a vacancy in the operations area at this point in time. That just happened this last Monday. So, what position? Operations. Operations, oh, operations foreman. foreman. It says vacant. Okay. That position you promoted last Monday. So Brad Manal has moved up from the operations below it, and now we, if if this was updated today, we'd have a vacancy there. Okay. But it this, shows it filled on the second sheet, though. Uh, these aren't really, these are just more or less, you know, the number of people and the ones doesn't necessarily give the people like I did on the one before, just the titles and, and okay. where they fit. Okay. So, any other kind of quick questions on that? Yeah, quick. Um, Randy, where does the, if, if it's approved, where does the fleet supervisor fit in in this second public works division chart? It would be a, a, a separate um, box in general. So like where you'd have your street operations supervisor, waste man, it'd be another one. And then what we would end up doing is the uh, mechanics in the different areas would then uh, follow underneath that individual. So all the mechanics would be under street? It'd be under the fleet supervisor when that position is created. Yeah, it looks like the whole department is on this sheet. Yeah, I don't see it I on that one. I, so I there's I, another whole department that's not shown here. Okay. Yeah, once we once the fleet supervisors. Gotcha. But, so sorry. you so you could take that street gosh. department on so the left. Given to me. Um, so like for in instance, the black lettering and move it all the way over to the right under sanitation and traffic, and then have the fleet supervisor no. above that. Oh, no. 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 Let's just just forget yeah. about it. Okay, yeah. I will. We got we're cutting into Steve's time. <laughs> yeah, we got to stay stop. on track with the yeah. budget. Well, I thought I thought we could be here till about midnight. No. <laughs> so we have a council okay. meeting at five thirty. If you wish, but we're going to talk about different. Okay. Things. <laughs> Excuse me. So, so long story short, this is how our department folds into the new and and maybe the one I got didn't have everything. So. Okay. <laughs> so what does waste management do? Well, the first thing we do is that all kind of generally our, our issues all start at your house. 
And uh, what you're kind of seeing here is a typical house where your sanitary waste, those are to be directed into the sanitary sewer. This picture, it's a little tough, but also illustrates the, uh, where the roof drains and the footing drains. The footing drains ideally are to go to the storm sewer. But one of the issues we have here in the old, in previous years, it was okay to kind of plumb everything and put them all into one. And so we do have a lot of storm drains that or the footing drains that we've removed in some areas are still, I think, problematic in others that are part of the sanitary sewer system that comes to the treatment plant to be treated. So essentially a lot of it kind of starts right there when you kind of send things our way, flush the toilet. Next thing you know, we kind of become what I consider that, that the whole system getting there makes us the middleman. So then we bring it down to the treatment plant. What we do there is we treat the liquids and we send those to the river. And the solids, we, those end up being dewatered and taken to the farm field. And if everything works right, all the people on the recreational part of the, the Cedar River are just happier than the Dickens with the quality of water and what we're doing. This is kind of small, but I, I'm gonna hit it real quick. We, I, we feel we had some major accomplishments this last year. I'm gonna hit, I'll talk about these and several of them I'm gonna talk a little more detail. Um, through in the f past fiscal year, we switched polymer suppliers and we're saving about $60,000 per year. We also started adding a chemical called ferric chloride. I'm gonna talk about that later, so I won't get into it. We did add a gator and we've added two, uh, two golf carts to the fleet out there to be running around. The majority of our vehicles never leave the water plant. So, you know, why do we really need a big pickup to go be driving around? So talk about that. The Gator also had a good use uh, when we were doing a lot of the flood work. You might have seen it parked out on uh, Ainsboro and stuff. The crews were out there. Not only is it used around the plant, but actually for flood duty. Um, we did have the Conger project I'm going to talk about later. We submitted the new treatment plan as required by our NPDES permit. Um, <clears throat> most of you are kind of aware there's efforts underway to make the wastewater plant a, potentially a regional wastewater facility. That information should be forthcoming to, to the council members in the near, near future. Uh, we did submit all the required documents of the consent decree. We did host the uh, state uh, wastewater meeting in June at the Arts Center, and uh, I'm a little prejudiced, but I think it's one of the better meetings we've had in recent years. Uh, we started contract mowing instead of doing a lot of the mowing ourselves, and uh, we think that's more efficient and cost effective. We have been using, along with Public Works and others, Purple Wave. Last year, we sold about $65,000 in equipment and about uh, additional 13,000 in miscellaneous scrap to add to the uh, bottom line. Several projects, the SCADA project, this is supervising control and data acquisition. This is a new uh, operational management program for the treatment plant that is almost completed. So that project's well underway, almost completed. The wing dike project uh, has been awarded. The wing dike is basically a rock wall that you're gonna see out in the river tying into our discharge so that under low flow conditions, the total flow of the Cedar River flows over our our discharge giving us complete mixing, which is very beneficial to uh, environmental compliance. The overflow project is EQ overflow. You just approved a change order a while back for a water main, which was completed last week. That's underway. The CIPP, we've had 3A, that's been done. We, at the time I put this together, 3B and C had been permitted. They were waiting bidding. That contract has been awarded several weeks ago, those two contracts. The Dry Run Creek easement, uh, we have had hurdles to clear, mostly the uh, easement from Walmart. Uh, it's waiting final design and bidding. AECOM is under contract to design the Titus lift station and the Force Main project, another consent decree project. Uh, we've got Strand under contract to do the biosolids improvements. These are a lot of necessary improvements at the plant to take care of some bottlenecks. Eco Engineers has prepared a biogas long-term contract evaluation, which again will be forthcoming to the City Council in the near future. This uh, permeal pavement project um, is the permeal pavement that's between 5th and 6th Street, kind of behind the brown bottle. This was part of the consent decree where instead of paying the state $136,000, we could invest that in a uh, an environmentally beneficial reuse project. So one of the things we had to do was do testing on that or buy additional equipment. We chose to do the testing, testing the cheaper route. Um, and then uh, most recently we've navigated, implemented some winter operating strategy uh, that has overall general DNR support. 
And as part of that, we've been adding a chemical called uh, polyaluminum chloride for our winter operations. This has been very beneficial while we're investing more in this chemical. Uh, it has enabled us to not add on to the satellite facility and force it into operation when we had difficulty in the past so that we can meet effluent compliance. So I talked about the Congress sewer. Basically, this was a project we took on this last year. Uh, very, uh, this was kind of came through the, through the employees and I'm very proud of everything that they did. It went from, basically we closed for about two weeks, Conger, Conger Street from uh, Broadway to Burton so that we can work the entire, entire project. Typically when we go out and we clean these, we send one combination truck and we kind of try to clean out all the grit out of there. Well, it wasn't very effective. And had we continued that, we wouldn't have done a very good job and would have spent probably 200 days just cleaning it with the progress we're having, maybe getting 10 feet clean today. But we took the crews, we had the equipment similar to what uh, a contractor would do. And we did incur some overtime, but in the end, I feel we saved about $800,000 in cost by doing this, and we got a very good job. You can kind of see in the upper right, this 36 inch sewer was at a flat, was very flat. It was about third full. That's about 12 inches of it where this accumulated debris. So when we cleaned the debris out, we took it down to the treatment plant, and that's kind of the pile that you see at the very bottom. There was a lot of debris in this line. And then we, we took it there so it would dry out, so then we could haul it to the landfill. This was a, this was a, a great effort on behalf of our staff. So. Uh, the ferric chloride, I talked about that. The, yes. Uh, it, okay, so is this a sanitary sewer or is this a storm sewer? This is a sanitary sewer. Now there is, there is one storm sewer area that does dump into this. It's a very minor one. It's only got like one manhole that basically drains out. I can't think of the address of it right now, but there is kind of toward the west end, kind of one area where there's one storm sewer out a manhole drainage collection base collection it's just one manhole it's kind of in a lower area so it, it doesn't have access to a storm sewer so they routed it into the sanitary that is on one of the list of projects to be removed but part of the reason this accumulates first of all you got to realize this stuff had been in there probably 40 50 years and it's a very flat sewer when it's flat you don't get the velocity and a lot of the sediments settle out and that big pile down there uh, is that stuff that goes to Nutriject or what? This stuff we took out, we let it dry out there so we didn't pay for the water weight and then we hauled it out to the landfill. Oh, okay, okay. So it's not a biosolid? This is not biosolids. Okay. It's not been processing, it's not treated. It's, okay. It's got a little pew smell to it. The biosolids are, that just smells great. Earthy, very earthy. Okay. <laughs> Uh, this next one project where we did uh, in the filter building, this is where we dewater the final solids. We started having problems with H2S, hydrogen sulfides, rotten egg smell. And this is kind of the detector when it goes off like that, it's above a desirable level. So the solution that we put in was to add a chemical called ferric chloride. The ferric chloride ties up and binds the hydrogen sulfide. And so then we don't have any of the odors like we did there. So a more safer environment to work in. But we had a side benefit from this. We pay for the solids leaving the plant on a wet basis. In other words, everything that goes out. We're able to increase that percent solids by about 3%. And that saved anywhere from 60 to $65,000 in what we pay Nutriject to take and dispose of the biosolids. So uh, one of the benefits you can kind of see in the upper right, we were able to utilize an existing tank that was at the plant. So we, we added it there. The downside is that every time that we need to get that chemical, that isn't where it's being utilized. It's utilized in another part, so we, we take it in these totes and we take it to that part. That's not, we have not had any problems, knock on wood, but you know, we'd prefer to, and part of the biosolids project we've got going is gonna properly relocate that tank or that application where it needs to be versus a temporary mode. Budgeting for the chemicals. This is one of the major savings, even though I've said we've saved 60, We've had some cost increase. Uh, kind of in the upper right is kind of the history of what we've spent on chemicals. Uh, we're projected to be, if you look down there, 19 projected about 300,000. I'm budgeting about 340,000. In this case, we kind of did a zero base trying to look at where we'll really spend the chemicals. I actually, when I started this process, had it lower and then one of the chemical suppliers said, 
We're starting to get stuff from, a lot of the chemicals come from China and places, and they're starting to add some tariffs. So I did have this, I did lessen, it's still reduced, but it wasn't as much as when I started the budgeting process. Talked about the golf carts and the gator. Again, we're using the gator. It's also very effective in our snow removal. It was used in flood control. Uh, we're able to rent these golf carts for like 750 bucks for a year. And the jury's still kind of out. It's good in the summer. I drove one a couple days ago in the winter. Today, it probably wouldn't be good on the icy roads that are still out there, but it is a cost savings. And uh, so we're looking to continuing to evaluate then go with that. Uh, again, the vehicles at our plant really never leave the plant. We've got one that goes out to the Anaerobic Lagoon, maybe to City Hall. So I think the eventual future of this may be more of electric vehicles or something like that. Now realize that the vehicles that we all use at the plant down there are all hand-me-down. So none of these are brand new. They've been used by one or two other people before we get them. But I do believe this is the future to try to use uh, either more gators or more uh, golf carts. So like I said earlier when we started, waste management is an enterprise funded. It's storm and sanitary. Uh, the storm, these numbers have been revised a little bit since I originally, not a lit, one of them's been revised a lot, but I'll get to that later. So roughly, if you take a look at everything we do, roughly somewhere around $7.8 million goes to the sanitary. And I know some of the people asked questions a while back, where is some of my you know, when we were talking about the storm sewer fee, a little under, right at $700,000 of our budget is part of those fees that go, that, that the storm sewer fees that are collected pay for. In total, the budget uh, was about 8.5 million. Uh, when you combine these two, kind of take a look at the sanitary sewer, roughly 43% salaries, 11.7 was capital outlay, 15.2%. Uh, commodities and 30.4% was contract and services. Several changes that were made in the budget this year that were over $10,000. Earlier I talked about the two FTEs seasonals we had. We can't get those through temp agencies. So we've been hiring, this last year we hired part-time employees. Why so we, can't you get them through temps? Their liability insurance doesn't like them working out in the street. I, I'm, so, so we're adding fifty thousand dollars in part time, and below we're reducing the temp agency fees. So, um, other things that we did, I did increase professional services because we're looking to do more contract mowing than we've done in the past. It wasn't necessarily budgeted totally when we did it in the past. Lab services. This is something that should have been increased and and hasn't. So we recommended seventeen thousand dollar increase. Several years ago when the permit changed, we had to go to from four days a week to seven days a week sampling. So the cost to do all this are increasing and that number stayed stagnant and needs to be increased. Uh, other equipment, uh, replacement and maintenance, just historically, this is a historic number. I'm recommending a $12,000 increase. Sales tax, this is essentially a pass through uh, when the rates, the rates have been increased. So there's more sales tax added. You'll, uh, so that's also, a deduct on the, you know, that's an increase to the revenue as well, but so the budget does reflect a $50,000 increase. The utility service, a $100,000 increase. Um, the number between last year and this year wasn't, there was not an add to it, and we were roughly 100,000, we're gonna be 100,000 over this year, so we, I believe we need to appropriately budget. We're looking at ways to save that, but um, it just costs a lot with all the heavy energy users and things that we have at the plant. And the final thing, electric supplies. Again, as we've looked at the way we've been spending, we, I'm recommending an increase. One of the things I want to talk to, hopefully we'll have a little bit of time toward the end, is sanitary sewer, a capital project, sanitary sewer, sewer root control. Um, this would be a whole new program I'm looking to add. Other cities are doing it. Um, so it's, it's chemical root control versus we can mechanically go out and clean them, but it's been other places I've been, Cedar Falls uses it. I've recommended it in the capital projects before, but I think this is be ad, advisable to implement this program now. Did it get in the CIP? No, we didn't put it in the official CIP. It was recommended maybe we put it in the operating capital part of it, which is what I'm re recommending here. Okay. So total with these things, 
uh, without the increases were about 255, with the root control 355. So there were places where we're decreasing. The temp agency, uh, I've got 83,000. I think, Michelle, the final number is more like 60,000. You left some in the temp agency. Uh, engineering and consultant the line item there, I took 13,000 out because uh, we're doing more projects in SRF. Uh, chemical and gases, remember we talked about that, 35,000. Another part of the engineering on those took 150 out of that typically budgeted number. It was 300. It's down. I'm recommending 150. Again, more CR, SRF projects. So while we've done some increases, I've also done some major decreases. Now these are just the ones over 10,000. The storm sewer, again, that's roughly 95% salaries. There's very little in that other than the salaries. So when you combine these, this is the way I originally put all this together, you can kind of see how everything balances. Again, the storm sewer, sanitary is roughly 98, storm sewer 8, the way the salaries and capitals um, came together. The If you look at everything, now this was an assumption and the final Numbers was, I estimated, about a 2.5% increase. If you take a look at the base budget, the way all these numbers were, if you take uh, personnel cost out, we'd have a total deduct of about $56,000. If we add the 100,000 root control back in, then there would be an increase of 43,000, almost 44,000 or a 1% increase. When you add the personnel cost in, that roughly now changes, it's roughly a $100,000 swing. So now the base budget, instead of being reduced by 56, is going to go up by 58 almost, or 0.8%. If you add the root control in, there's 150, roughly 157,000 or a 2% increase in this budget that was originally prepared. I'm going to take, I think, so we do have a moment. And that, I just want to say those personnel things are changed, so that's did this before he had the right numbers, so. I did check, they haven't changed a lot, but some. Um, According to Michelle, they have changed a little bit. Not a lot. Where, <laughs> where can we see the changed numbers? Mm -hmm. Or well, we can't. I've got them in a spreadsheet in my, no, in my hopefully office. Hopefully they're attached. I, Kelly, I'm not sure they got to them. With, in this budget summary, in this one? They'd be in there. They okay, be in there. Mm -hmm. thank you. Okay, so what are you talking about? I don't know what you guys are talking about. They're where? Salaries. They're on this sheet. Definite pronouns being thrown around, and I don't know what you're referring to. They're on this sheet. Which sheet is that? That's the additional budget for additional budget budget. preparation worksheet. Right. The, the budget worksheet that. So the the salary numbers on here are probably more accurate than in the presentation. You know, we aren't done with negotiations, so honestly, I don't yeah. know which is more accurate. But I yeah. will tell you, the numbers on that sheet is what got in the published budget. Gotcha. Okay. So that's the additional needs level that we got yeah. right. here. Yep. We're, we're we're similar. I just wanted you to know you're not going to match them up exactly. It won't it won't work. Thank you. But. It's not different by a lot. Steve did his presentation early. And Good I job, and, and I was right. still late compared to a lot of people. And there are no, um, at least on this, there are no increases in salary, in the number in of person. salaries. Right. There's no personnel number increases. Okay. I think if I'm looking at what you've got here on your sheet, Michelle, this number here, 33, 325,013 that I had, you have $3,387,854. So you so tell close. me. Okay. Hmm? Okay. Okay. Any other questions for Steve? Yes. I, I yes. got one more quick thing I need to add, and I'm sorry. I just want to go to sewer backups when I talked about that a little bit. This wasn't in the original, I've added this. If you take a look at this sheet, this kind of tells the breakdown of the various backups. Is this in any of the information you've given us? No. no. This was new today. I added at the Any end. Changes to the presentation. So it is in the presentation that, oh, okay. that she has. Okay. 
if you take a look at the this this event, these various 2013 through 18, uh, it shows the percent of root related backups that we have. And overall during this time, 20% of them. In the drier years, which you can see in 15, 16, and 17, <clears throat> there are 40 to 40 to 47 percent of the sewer backups that we have are sewer related. So I think the chemical that we're proposing to add when you put it in the right areas will help diminish these sewer backups. I think when I look at this, there's another interesting fact here from if you look at the fog column in the percent, back in 2013, we had 14 percent of the backups were fog related. In 2014-15, we implemented a fog program. And look at how the numbers and the percentages of fog related backups have decreased. Okay. So that's the advantage of putting together a preventive maintenance program in one fashion or another, typically, and, and I was surprised, I just got these numbers today. This really does illustrate how it changes. And I'm sorry, Steve, that document, can you send that to us or is it already included? Oh, and I just missed we it. We got it today so yeah. i swapped out the presentation today so it's in, so it's it's in there in now yeah great it's in there she added it today okay thank you the other two things i don't know how much we i need to tell you these percentage sewers these numbers here if you remember previously the one change on the capital outlay since i put this together take a look at the sanitary sewer capital outlay on on this slide here it was one of the previous ones is, this is the same, I just switched out numbers. Uh, since I put this originally together, there's been about $1.6 million of sewer related capital projects added to this budget line item. Does that make sense? And I don't know. This and these sewer projects are basically the street reconstruction and stuff. It, no, that was done because we had a rate increase, and I'm balancing the re expected revenue with the total okay. expenses. So I, we won't, we we may not have to bond for sewer this year. I did this sheet change. I believe he did. Well, but she said they just I, I'm going, out today. I'm talking about my, yes, that, that sheet, I don't know, did you change that one today, too? This, this is, this is the one that was up here. I just added the, you Appar had, So apparently, yes. Yeah, I had $913,000 in that capital outlay. There was 259000 roughly for, in line item 2163, the that's budget and the numbers that we have here now have $1.8 million in it. Okay, so that's changed. Okay. So, that, I'm just, that's the facts as I saw them. So that's really. My only question to you is how are we doing with the consent decree? Are We're on track with that. Everybody's happy. We're doing what we said we would do. Question one, on track, yes. Happy. I think those that are regulatory, I believe they're happy. I believe we have some citizens that aren't necessarily, you know, so happy with the results of everything that happened in September and October. So, uh, because of all the water. Yeah. If yeah. you take a look, yeah. If you take a look at the backup, this is 2018 that it's in here, that's on your sheet. You know, we we've been. You know, we the last uh, 15, 16, and 17, we were around 20. Last year, we had 137 backups. Now, again, 122 of those, if you look at this sheet, were rain-related. So, I mean, got killed. So, I mean, I mean, the 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 numbers tell you what happened. I mean, had we not had the rain-related, we would have had some. We'd have been more like 15, but. And that's where uh, we've got AECOM hired to take a look and come back sometime in the somewhat near future to give us an update on predictions and how we can best spend the money. Is it in footing drains? It is, is it in uh, capital improvements? Is it in lining? So we can make improvements effectively to, to move forward and try to minimize similar backups and situations in the future. All right, we'll go to Mrs. Klein and then Mr. Morris, you got a question? Mm -hmm. Mrs. Klein. I think the idea of chemical root control is great, yeah. but also how many of the 44 employees live in Waterloo? Um, let's go back to 42. Okay. Because we've got uh, roughly 40 right now. In Waterloo? 
Well, we've got 40 employees out of the 42, two vacancies. Okay. And 22 of those reside in Waterloo. Okay. And do you, do you live in Waterloo? I'm sorry. And I'm I live sorry. in Waterloo. I'm one of those 40 that live in Waterloo. Okay, great. Thank you. That was pretty much a requirement when I came. Thank you. So. Mr. Morris. Yes, uh, Steve, in that, in that one, uh, um, page 15, contracted services and then salaries. Contracted services consists of what? Um, I mean, we got, there's 2,373,000. A lot of that is the nutrijack when you're hauling, basically mowing. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, when we do uh, uh, security, just all those little things add up. So how much is Nutrijet per year? I'm trying to think. I think they were, I think it's right around 350000 Okay, so there'd be an, about another $2 million in what contracted services, mowing, what else? And is, is there any way that, that any of those services can be done in-house? That includes all kinds. Like, yeah. You're talking about the whole 1300, 1300 series. series yeah, that's temp so agencies. All kinds of, well, it's, well, there's not much in temp agencies, but it includes, yeah. you know, legal, engineering. engineering, all kinds of things. It's not, it's not like employees were contracting out. It's services. services. But none of that can be done in-house is what I'm asking. Well, we try to evaluate that, and you know, and frankly, we were mowing the grass at the treatment plant, but we were not doing it effectively. And when we added the cost up, when we contracted it out, it could be done cheaper. Okay. This doesn't include. Sorry, this doesn't include any of the um, companies we work with, right? This is only. This is that's that doesn't include those charges. Yeah, it, it yeah. doesn't include capital projects, but it uh. does include. Operating services. Okay. So I'll. I mean, the uniforms, I mean, all those things. Yeah, it's just got lots of different things in there. That's the hard part when you condense it down the whole category. It's it's a lot of city ser you know, services that we have to purchase from others. Mm -hmm. Mr. Morrissey. But it's operating items, it's, it's not capital items. Mr. Morrissey. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> regarding the permeable, permeable pavement drainage test, uh, do you have those results? I mean, and I mean, or is there a hard copy that can be sent to us about? And is are there plans based on those tests and the results that you obtain to Essentially the proceed test any a, further? The test is a drainage test, and you kind of determine okay how. How much is the permeability of this? How much is the water soaking through? Then we'll do another time. Has it lessened? And then there's a point where you got to go back and you got to clean that because it isn't functioning right. Our other choice was to purchase uh, like a $5,000 cleaning device, add that, which we'd be using once every six months. So what we chose to do is just do the test in-house, monitor it. This satisfies condition of the EPA and the consent decree. And then at a point where it gets dirty enough, when we start having the permeability, it doesn't soak through, the water doesn't drain out of a, basically you're just putting a bucket over there, you put a certain level and you time how quick it drains out. That's the test that we're doing. And then it, eventually that test will prove, in other words, if it drains out in 10 seconds or whatever, all of a sudden it's 20 seconds or 25 seconds. When you get to that point, then we're gonna have to kind of go out and clean, clean the, Basically, it just cracks between the blocks, you know, this open space between the blocks. But in doing this project, there was a hope for end result or outcome. Has that proven itself to be something that's, that is, would be good for Waterloo to have in other areas of the town? Right, and I think there is other things with the SRF where we could put other, you can take a certain percentage, like 1% of your interest, instead of paying that to the state, similar to what we were able to do with this um, you know, with our fine, then we can put that into another project. I know one of the ones we've talked about might be another pave, putting permeable pavement in other permit permeable pavement in other alleys. Somebody's even mentioned the parking lot back here. So there are other similar related projects like this. This was the first one I think from talking to engineering. They've learned some things they would do different in the future, and uh, I think it's step one and probably somewhat many more potentially to come. Okay. 
And then uh, you went over that SCADA, SCADA. SCADA. What exactly is that? It's called Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition. It's basically the brains of our plant. It basically takes all the information and brings it into one point where you can kind of look at what, what, how much energy you're using, what's running, what's not running, how fast is it running and doing all of that kind of stuff and helping us making operational decisions. And essentially it's the reason that we're able to go 24, instead of being, at one point this plant was run 24 seven. With this in place and all the securities and all the backups, you can then now run it with an eight hour shift during a day and then the, the control system warns you of alarms. If we got too much water here, this pump isn't working. So then it alarms it and then we're able to bring people in and we, that's really the, the, the way that the city was able to reduce and other people reduce from a 24 seven, three shifts a day down to one shift a day. Okay, thanks. Can I ask uh, right. one quick one? Yes, ma'am. Um, you mentioned months ago, and I'm sorry, I don't remember exactly what you were talking about, but there was some gas or material that you were producing that you thought could be resold and serve as an income source. Okay. What was that and how is that working? That is the biogas and that was one of the things I said the company Eco Engineers that we'll be bringing back in the near future. We've had several meetings with them. I mean, the, the real dilemma that you can do it, it's feasible, but it's a very expensive, high, high risk and how do you caution the reward to monetary payback? So, so you'll be feeding information right. to us on that. Soon. I hope, you know, we've had several meetings, the report is done, we're trying to to figure out a strategy that we think is a comfortable place for the city to make this, because to, to, to do all this, you're gonna invest somewhere between possibly 20 to 25 million. Huh. So that's a lot Got of money. Got that in your back pocket? <laughs> hmm? <laughs> well, let's go with that one, <laughs> yeah. Even, and that's, that's Good idea, even, that's let's not, end on that. That's not even close to the, the overall price tag. Um, so, but, but one, I mean, one that of, is one of the facility plan things that we're looking at. But I mean, it's it's how much do you want to risk? I mean, Des Moines doing it, Sioux City's doing it, Davenport's getting into it, Dubuque is already doing it. Um, Muscatine. Let's talk about it more later. Okay, there right. is more to follow on that. Hopefully, in the very near future. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Steve. Uh, just wrapping up with um, uh, some of the things taking place. Um, okay. You know, it's what do you say? If you fail to plan, you. you you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So I uh, was trying to get our, our plant together for the next 20, 25 years, which is the way that we need to be looking yeah. at it to, to make sure we're right. So we don't look 25 years later and like kick the can down the road or it'll be the two liter down the road by then if we don't <laughs> take care of some of these things. So thank good, you. Good job, Steve. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Am I? While we're in transition to our next presentation, I do have a burning question for council. Are we uh, meeting tomorrow night? Are we are we it, meeting tomorrow? We we will have meetings like on Wednesday to. and Thursday. Um, but I just kind of want to know, at least after four thirty. I have a two o'clock doctor's appointment, so I couldn't get here until probably four thirty-five. Okay. Um, but I, I would personally like to have as many opportunities as we can to, to talk about things. Very good. Maybe we do 5 o'clock? I, I would be here, but I might have to be late. Okay. okay. Mr. Morrissey? I don't want to. I mean, I have a city, so I don't know when I'm getting back. You would. You can't make it? I'll, I'll post, make it. I don't know. I'll do this. I'll post Let's one for 5 o'clock. Sure. And well, then... Let me ask a question. Councilman Foyce, you said you'll be here later. I could be here later, yeah. Because do we, do we always, well, I guess it's too late now, but I'm like, do we have to do 5 or 5.30? Could some of them start at 4? Sure. Well, I mean, we, we just can't for tomorrow because right. it's 4.30 now. Yeah. We have a 4 o'clock on Thursday and a 5 o'clock on Wednesday. We have to notice it. And then um, also, we also need to be thinking, and we, we should talk about this at 5 o'clock. Or did you need an answer prior to that? After now, so I can post, post an agenda. Because yeah. we, we also need to have a, one for five. We, we also need to make sure five. that we have a reason for the meeting, too. Yeah. I mean, we're just coming in to meet. We need to no, have a reason. I think Michelle's I think we'll got some. Reason. <laughs> okay. 
Michelle had some information she was going to share with us. I think we all have questions. Um, we, I think most of us got some updates on CIP today um, that I'd like to question. So maybe we can put the CIP on the. Did you get that email? Different. Did you? I got. I haven't looked at email today. So yeah, you? there's. I think it went to everyone, didn't it, Margaret? I said council. Yeah. I know that there were some on there. I just haven't read them yet. I have yeah. <laughs> Could you put budget and CIP on that? It says that councils. And it, strangely enough, it said copies. Yeah, we may have to let no, no. Yeah, uh, I'm going to just no put budget because we would have to have the department that's working on the CIP say if they'd be ready if to they have a public it. meeting. But we could yeah. still talk about the CIP, could we not? I guess I'd be more comfortable just doing budget because I I don't know if Noel is number one available or if they're going to well, be. Well, I understand around. that. But even if you had just budget on the agenda, at the time, if he was here, we could add CIP to the agenda if anyone wanted to do so. We wouldn't be able to add at that point. Are you needing to have department heads to have your discussion? I think so, yeah, yeah. Um, wait until you see that document. It appeared to me that there were quite a few changes. Now, I could be wrong. I don't the know. One from Seth this morning? Yeah. Okay, I haven't looked at it. Sorry. I just made the agenda public for tomorrow five. to talk about budget at, at five, five o'clock okay yep. okay we're ready all right um i think there's a powerpoint um, with the mayor's office i know all of you are very intrigued to see my smiling face uh, so i added that for you um just really quickly uh the mission of the mayor's office uh is um uh, run taxpayer-funded taxpayer uh, government entity for the citizens, um, chief operating officer of 500 plus employees and uh, direct report for uh, department heads um, and very uh, specifically outline, outline in the uh, state of Iowa code. Um, this, our org chart is a work in progress. As you know, there's been some changes and once we um, um, get through our rules of procedures that will come a little bit later, um, we will kind of restructure things a little bit uh, differently on that from all that we've been doing over the last uh, six months or so. Uh, presiding officer for city council meetings, um, uh, ceremonial representation of the city for ribbon cuttings, uh, public appearances, uh, speaking requests, uh, interviews, uh, and other segments, and just uh, doing overall outreach, trying to engage uh, conversations with the public and see what's going on out, out in our community as well. Um, a lot of boards and commissions, et cetera, um, as you can see um, by the list of them, um, all of these are pretty much active and probably left off uh, a couple as well. So a lot of meetings, a lot of boards, um, statewide, uh, locally, uh, and some I didn't even list on here nationally. Uh, I have uh, just a couple staff members. Uh, Executive Secretary uh, is Michelle Westfall. Um, and some of the things that she does, uh, um, probably takes in 30 to 60 calls uh, per day, uh, provides confidential assistance, uh, screening of calls for the mayors, and sometimes in legal, her and Sherry kind of uh, swap every now and then. Um, she helps to uh, direct folks to the particular department they need to go to, follows up on uh, complaints and requests, um, calendar appointments, uh, keeps current list of uh, boards and commissions, press releases, uh, block parties, um, budget for the office, um, count, I mean, uh, staff presentations or for uh, recognitions, um, and just, I don't know how many emails she probably gets a day, maybe 75 to 100 at least that she needs to uh, get through and other secretarial duties. 
Um, also, we have a part-time communications director, uh, Wendy Bowman, and operates under enhancing the image of Waterloo and citizens and residents inside and outside. Uh, strategy 4.1 is a marketing and communications team uh, and communications plan targeting residents and businesses. Um, so that was presented uh, some times ago. Uh, one of the things that has just been formulated was a communications committee or Waterloo image team, which we've been having meetings between Main Street, the schools, uh, CBB or Experience Waterloo, the Center for Arts and Hawkeye uh, Community College. And they're putting together a template of some things that we're going to do moving forward. Uh, it's put out over 51 press releases couple residence academies and mayor's coffee after hours and several different uh, events as well. Um, the economic development, our marketing materials that we take to Good Morning Cedar Valley and place on the website, uh, that information as well. Um, help with the lead grant campaign, um, several other initiatives that we have going on. Um, helps with uh, the Grand Crossing apps, uh, commercial and Jefferson Street streetscape application, video, uh, other videos for Bike Waterloo and numerous other activities, uh, special events, the state of the city, fireworks, staff planning and retreat, uh, youth council inaugural event, website maintenance strategy, advises daily communications on topics, special events, and public education also deals with uh, social media um, and a myriad of other areas as well. Um, so that's, that's that particular office. Um, do I back out of here? Where do I go for the money portion? Is that already up here? All right, so um, there's it's pretty much uh, pretty much um, flat uh, for additional needs, and I know there was one area uh, we're looking at with regards to fees and other things that we need to have take place with our our department from some of our uh, places that we belong to, and I think that's roughly at. Uh, 10,000 now, but um, I think that's the only that's, the only that's, change. You don't see that in the additional needs level. I added that later because uh, I was concerned that some things might go up, so there is another 10,000. And we did the CPI finally was released. Apparently that got released several weeks late this year because of the government shut down. So Mayor and Council, I'll be thrilled to know that your pay will go up 1.75%. <laughs> starting in July. And then um, where's the council at on here? Um, oops, looks like it's not in this one. Oh, it's, yeah, it's another, whoop, I got the communication budget separately. Okay. Council separate too. So. I talk about communications. Is there any much, much change on here? Uh, nothing got changed on there. Nope. So that's the same as it was last year? Yep, communication budget's the same as last year. And then where's council? <laughs> council. And then uh, council, um, there's no change other than the uh, CI, the, other than the consumer price index yeah. as well to council also. But I'd like to say I don't, I don't personally think there's enough in account 1344 because the iPad cost <clears throat> For some reason, the new contract is supposed to be cheaper, but the iPads seem to be costing more, so that's probably under budgeted a bit. So that'll have to be increased. So are there some changes that need to be made to the budget that's been posted then? Well, that's the question. Um, I don't know if the travel and training for council is going to be used, so if it's not, we could. that would certainly cover the increase that you need, I think, in in the iPad expense. 
And we we do have an election. Election and this that's year. Like budgeted out of the clerk finance right. department. What about the travel and training now? Yeah. The training. You might need the training here. For so we have new people. So Kelly, you have the iPad and data budget, so if we can just communicate how much that needs to increase. But we have what three council three council people are up for election. And the mayor. Well mine would come from somewhere else, wouldn't it? it wouldn't come from this. It comes from so yeah. so we have so there's fifteen hundred in travel and it looks like you know, we've, run, we've used between five and 600 in 2017 and 18, so probably we can cover it all unless you're wanting to do more. And you said the communications position was not listed? I did not, I'm yeah, sorry, I didn't is. check my emails late enough. I don't have a copy of that. Yeah, there's no change in the communications. So budget. that is under the mayor's budget though? It has its own activity budget, communications. And we can access that under the, on Novus. Kelly, is that listed? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you posted that it's under the mayor? Yeah, everything. Yeah. We were, it was all uploaded on Friday. The, well, there should have been. It wasn't online, yeah. The there presentation was, was today. Okay. The budget numbers were Friday. And there, and there were separate, separate files, I guess I'll call them, for the mayor's budget. The communications budget and the council budget. Okay, but did, they're both listed on Novus under the mayor's, under that. Okay. All right. Questions? Where? What are you talking it, about? The the budgetary numbers for the mayor communications and council are all underneath the mayor's presentation item on the agenda. Yeah, they're listed with the attachments, right? Mm -hmm. They're all the attachments, and that's yep. all we need. That's all there is. I believe so. Available for us. Okay. Yep. Okay. Questions of the mayor? Yes. Um, how many of the three live in Waterloo? Uh, two full time live in Waterloo, one part time, not. Not? Right. Okay. Thank you. My question, Mr. Mayor, the only real increase you see, again, with apologies that I don't have it in front of me, is fees for membership. Yeah. Dues. And I think you'd mentioned a travel increase. Yeah, like right now, um, just to give you an example, um, March 18th, um, there's an opportunity for me to go and present uh, to investors with regards to opportunity zones and potential. Um, I'm probably going to have to foot the bill again uh, to go. So I probably, in the course of the last three years, I can't even remember, maybe I average a couple thousand dollars a year out of my own pocket of travel that is not professional development, none of that, that's specifically for the city of Waterloo. And did you add it into the, the budget yeah, for this so year? Yeah, that'll come back, that'll come back to you. When? Uh, when we get things finalized and uh, do that. But it's not gonna be in the budget that we see. Okay. Yeah, uh, Unless some of that 10000 could go yeah. for it, I don't know what you were thinking. Okay. No. Questions? Other questions? Well, one, one of the things that, that I noticed when looking through here, um, Michelle and Mr. Mayor, was um, when it comes down to the council um, explanation of the budget activity narrative, you know, that there's who, who prepares this? These boxes that department activity description, department activity objectives, who does that? Because under city council, I just, who, who prepared the, uh, that? It's probably from prior years, honestly. I'm not sure. <laughs> so that could be as old as, you know, 1939. Well, I know it's not that old, but what, do you have something you'd like to say different? Because we could change it. <laughs> well, I, I just uh, think that there's a lot more that city the city council people do than uh, a line and maybe a half. Um, I mean, and some of the things like what Sharon's mentioning and has been coming up lately about CIP and about the involvement we have with the budget and 
about ordinances and everything like that. I know that the this probably is just a general statement, but I'm just wondering who put that together and what was it based on, and um, that's it. Who wrote it? I'd just like to find that out. I maybe see if we could take change the that. liberty, Mr. Morrissey, of saying that I bet that if you made some additions and just submitted them to the mayor, they would be very gladly incorporated into that document. You really think so, Sharon? You, yes, I boy, do. Boy, you're optimistic. I am. I'm, I, I'm I absolutely. To, I might have to assess a surcharge. Well, okay. <laughs> well, there's. There you go. There you go. Okay. It'll at least be considered. Exactly. Yes, and Mr. Mayor, I just the Blackhawk Emergency Management. Um, who serves on that? Jerome. Jerome. Somebody. Jerome and I both rotate. Uh -huh. If it's if it's um, things with regards to voting or charging or public statements about it, yes, I'll do that. But uh, Jerome will Jerome will go when I can't go. And so, how many people are on that? Uh, you mean on that board? Right. Uh, the county mayors and or representatives and the public safety uh, representatives from those places plus the board, uh, one to two board of supervisors as oh, well. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Any other questions of the mayor? If not, thank you so much, boss. Appreciate it. And I think we are ready to go to the city attorney presentation. You're going to teach me how to run this? No. <laughs> I just set it all up for you. But it needs a good 12 year old here to run this computer for us. <laughs> We're trying to get your son a job. <laughs> <laughs> Close enough. Are we ready? We have to do this. All right, Dave. Hello, Dave Zellifer, city attorney. And we've got our, uh, all of our stuff here for everybody to see. Slideshow. I want it to be full screen. And um, Dave, since uh, time is modest, um, I'm not going to say just sli stick to the slides, but. I don't have a whole lot to say. But the <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Yes, you all know what we do. Uh, uh, I represent the mayor, the city council, uh, all the department heads. I'm in charge of code enforcement. I do all the prosecution of simple misdemeanors of traffic, of municipal infractions. I attend council meetings and I read, not as much as I used to, I read Robert's Rules of Order every Monday to, to see what's going on and uh, we're busy. We. Uh, we have a lot to do. There's not a day that uh, is boring around here. Right now we have uh, me. I'm at 90%. A, thir uh, a third of my salary is paid by the is it sanitation, waste management, because I'm in charge of code enforcement also. And we have Sherry, who is uh, full time. So we got basically two of us. Chris Wendland, uh, as many of you know, handles the overflow. And without him, I wouldn't know what to do. He's brilliant and helps us out a great deal. As you all know, I'll be, uh, well, here we are, the Chris Wendland does the overflow. So there's two of us plus Chris. <clears throat> As you all know, I'll be retiring on August 2nd, which means that uh, you're going to have to make some decisions about how you want the attorney's post run. Before I got here, I think I'm the only sitting city attorney who's ever actually had an office full-time in City Hall building itself. We've always had outside counsel, whether it was uh, Bill Smith or Vic Kennedy, uh, Dave Tyler, John Holmes, uh, Hugh Field, 
and Jim Walsh and then me. I've, I think I've served under most of them. I think I've served under seven police chiefs in my day, but uh, I'm the first city attorney to be here full time and I've enjoyed it and I think the public has benefited and I think the department heads have benefited and I think council has benefited uh, from having somebody who's here, somebody you can pick up the phone and call and I'll run over. I spend a lot of time running over. But at the same time, um, we need some more help. And, and uh, I've enjoyed the, the pay and I've enjoyed the work, but I don't know if you're gonna be able to find someone, a single individual who's gonna take on the city attorney job full time as well as code enforcement and as well as having someone here to meet and greet our happy public uh, every day and with things like uh, sewer backups and uh, as, as the mayor knows as of today, uh, mailboxes being run over by snow plows and all the other little things that we have to handle on a daily basis that uh, I'm sure council gets a lot of phone calls about also. So um, you're gonna have to make a decision on whether or not you want a city attorney here in the building or out like we used to have uh, with it, but someone needs to be here full time whether it's the city attorney or an assistant. Um, there isn't a city attorney in the state of Iowa in a, in a major city who handles prosecutions of municipal infractions and traffic code. And there isn't a city attorney in the state of Iowa who also runs the code enforcement department. I've looked at some of the salaries and, and we will get, uh, get to those later. You know, I, you're gonna need some more money probably. As they said in Jaws, you're gonna need a bigger boat and as we say here in, the, in my business, uh, you're gonna need more people and more money. I, I would love to see the city attorney's office in Waterloo actually become modernized and become a city attorney's office like they have in other cities our size, like Dubuque and Council Bluffs, Ames, places like that. They have anywhere from uh, you know three to four to five uh, attorneys and paralegals and, and uh, separate offices, and it's almost a, a law office they have, but of course their budgets are significantly higher than ours. I think Dubuque's is right, uh, just over $900,000 a year. And uh, that would be quite a, and, uh, quite a deal for us to go something that large, I know. If you look at what we did back in 2012 and 2013, I took over as city attorney in January of 2015 uh, we paid uh, our, our city attorney a retainer plus hourly uh, rate for all the work uh, he did. Our budget back then in 2012 was about 408,000 and in 2013, 406,000. That's still very low considering what other cities do. I think Cedar Falls this year with one city attorney is at 464,000. So we've, uh, since I took over, we've dropped our spending in the city attorney biz by, 40%, give or take a bit. Our total budget for this year was $256,627. Now this is a little bit different and, and unusual because other departments run up legal bills and it doesn't run through my, my department. Uh, the salaries and benefits for Sherry and me are $168,000. Contactual services add up to $76,000. And that also includes outside legal services, things like postage and my filing fees and, and those types of things for 657 A's that we do. And uh, our library, I think we have about $10,000 budgeted for that. And we're, I'm happy with that. We finally got LexisNexis, or Thompson, excuse me, and they're good. This just shows you what we did back on expense line 1313, I think is outside legal uh, work. And if you can see in 2012 and 2013, we were somewhere around 200,000, 186,000 then since I've taken over, uh, it's gone down significantly. Uh, some examples here, Cedar Falls, uh, I think, I, I know Kevin Well, he's a superb lawyer. He's right around 132,000. Uh, Dubuque City Attorney is 174,000 plus benefits. And they have a full-time assistant at about uh, 160, I think. Plus their city attorney, they've kept on at 62%. Uh, Barry Lindahl, who has been there since God created dirt, and he, it's always nice to have someone uh, like that around the city attorney's office. One thing you're gonna have to do is find somebody and train them. Uh, municipal law is a heck of a lot different than the regular private practice of law. 
I'd be happy to hang around and show people what to do, but uh, I am on August 2nd bidding you all a fair adieu. I'll, I'll hang around and sub and do a council meeting on occasion or prosecute if you need me in a, in a tight squeeze, but uh, I'll be 66 years old and golf courses are calling and uh, maybe my blood pressure is... Uh, all day. My, I'm yapping. Well, you did too, so <laughs> I mean, my blood pressure will go down. So I'm, that's what I'm hoping for. End of slideshow. There you go. I didn't even say anything this time. I'm, uh, but you, uh, I, I know your looks. So uh, <laughs> I was married, you know, so I've <laughs> seen that look for 20 years. We're legally years. married. Anyway, the bottom line is that uh, you, you guys have some, my budget right now is the same as it was last year. That's what I'm proposing, the 256000 and something or other. We can make, Sherry and I can make do, but the thing is I'm only gonna be here for a month in the next fiscal year. Uh, you better start advertising, you better start putting some feelers out, and you better start finding out what's going on or come August 2nd, you're not gonna have an attorney, except Chris Wendland, and I know he doesn't wanna do this full time. Why would he not? I don't know, <laughs> he just doesn't have that. Uh, he has this thing called a private practice, but uh, I've enjoyed it very much, and I would I would love to hang around and uh, and help out. Right. But at the same time, you guys have got five months and five days to find somebody <laughs> and to reorganize that department. So, uh, Mrs. rots Mrs. a ruck. Mrs. Juan has a question, and Mrs. Klein. Um, on the the overheads, you have needs of legal department, new department head for code enforcement. That's just a what if. Uh, if you can find somebody who's willing to take on code enforcement as, as part of the job as city attorney, then more power to you. But as I indicated, there isn't a single city attorney anywhere in the state in a major city who also runs code enforcement. And how much time do you spend? I mean, what do you do with code enforcement? I get calls every day. Uh, I'm, I'm on the phone with code enforcement and or bereaved citizens. Plus, I prosecute all their stuff and prepare their stuff. We go out in the field with them sometimes and look so at situations. So your engagement with code enforcement is legal? Yeah, and, and as department head. I, you know, budgeting but would them. you say most of it is, is legally based? Yes. Mm -hmm. So if we got another department head that wasn't an attorney, they'd be coming to the city attorney anyway, would they not? For quite a few things, yeah, but but a lot of what you call legal is uh, is complaints, and and we get a lot of people out there who aren't satisfied with talking to the code enforcement officer or their foreman. You know, who's your boss? Well, I'm the boss, so they come to me to talk about their weeds or their grass or a junk. But they're automobile. asking you just to kind of reinforce what the code enforcement officer said, just yeah, yeah. to interpret the ordinances, or uh, most of them are asking me to die and go away at the, at the end of the conversation, but yes, <laughs> yes, that's what it I'm is. I'm just trying to so, think, is there's the, a more appropriate place for code enforcement, where would that be? I think, no, they are, uh, well, I hate to put this on Randy. Uh, Oh no. Oh my gosh. No, no, no. <laughs> why why no, I, don't we just okay. have him so, just kind so, of so bury think, a hole? But, yeah. but what I think um, Dave has um, done is uh, talked about a uh, full-time city attorney and a assistant city attorney or a, a, a part-time, well, I'm thinking you're thinking a, a full-time assistant or part-time right. assistant. And then, um, or either that or a paralegal, somebody that can handle some of the processing parts of it. So we need to kind of discuss that. But if I'm not mistaken, uh, our, our ordinances, um, could they be considered the laws in which folks may handle themselves or be citizens here, whether they own property or in a myriad of different ways. But don't you need somebody to be a lawyer to go to court? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, like Cedar Falls has hired a firm. They're paying them uh, $3,600 a month to do all their municipal infractions, all their traffic uh, stuff and small claims stuff. So they can just pay them that amount every single month, whether they have five cases or whether they have, whether they have 50, that's what the amount is. It's on a retainer type basis. But so, if we hired a full-time assistant city attorney, that person could handle the code enforcement. Yeah, that would be great. And all the prosecutions of the misdemeanors and things like I did in 1982 you know, when I first started here. 
Well, back then we did not, we had a, an outside city attorney. We had a city attorney, but four <coughs> assistants, all of us part-time, and uh, it worked out very well. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. <coughs> yes, uh, Dave. So <coughs> does this budget include Ehlers and Cooney? Include Part that? of it, yes. Uh, now, Ehlers and Cooney bills out other departments, too. But we, we've paid some of their bills through us, like the Sunnyside South stuff we started. And I think with the labor negotiations, they're helping us out. I think that comes out of Lance's budget, doesn't it? Yeah. And so that's one of the things. we I don't have control of all the legal money here. I just have what rolls through my department. Planning and zoning uses Chris Wendland, and a lot of his bills can go through there. So actually, most of them go through me. Ollers and Cooney. Our insurance defense work is paid outside the legal world. It's paid through one of Michelle's magic areas. So Dave, the Ehlers and Cooney deals with different departments in the city. Mm -hmm. And so then they, those departments will be billed. So do we have a total dollar figure for the amount that Ehlers and Cooney has been paid in the last year? And can we get that? I don't, I don't have it. I assume I can Michelle can dig it up. It. Okay. And well, so gives me a follow -up question. Is, is there... I mean, what would your legal opinion be if the monies that are expended for Ehlers and Cooney for different departments <coughs> was, in fact, incorporated into a city legal budget for the for an attorney paid at a price that they could handle that with an assistant? Would that be an option? It is an option. There are other cities around. I know Council Bluffs had a, a city attorney and a, a litigation specialist, somebody who did some of the major stuff that we farm out. Now, the insurance company, I think travelers might want to uh, keep their own in, in attorneys. That's up to them. Some of the things we use Allers and Cooney for are highly specialized, such as when we go through bonding every year, Allers and Cooney draws up all of that it's really highly specialized bonding paperwork. And there's really only two um, bond attorney firms in the state of Iowa that work with municipalities and um, community colleges and other government entities. So I don't think we would necessarily um, be able to get away from using some outside legal counsel for some more kind of highly complicated okay things. but all what i'm asking for is if there can be a um a sheet that we could look at that shows the different departments what they've given to ehlers and cooney or any other um legal entity that would be inclusive of legal fees that the city's paying outside of your legal department because your your legal department dave you're saying is two hundred fifty six thousand. that's basically. correct okay and then you have one little office there and then a dedicated legal assistant, which would be Sherry. And uh, if Waterloo was to have something that was even in parity with other cities, uh, given you know our uniqueness in that, we're talking about something that would take several hundred thousand dollars more in, in a budget for the legal department, plus more space, like maybe knocking out walls and stuff like that and moving people around in City Hall that we have now, which would be an expense on top of it. Well, we, we would also ahead. have to look at what other kinds of things those other offices are doing. Yeah. Because they, you know, different cities organize things differently and they might do maybe lobbying or working with lobbyists under their legal department, for example. So they might, you know, you, I don't know that you can necessarily look at just the dollars of a legal budget. We would need to establish what duties they were going to do mm -hmm. as well. And, uh, yes, that's, that's really not something you can get accomplished between now and August 2nd either, but it is a task for council somewhere along the line to look into. Okay. All right. We have Mrs. Klein and then Mrs. Jordan. Do you and Sherry both live in Waterloo? As does Chris Wendland. That was on my sheet. Yes, we're all native Waterlooans and have resided here, so yes. Thank you. Mr. Stewart. The discussion that we just had in response to Mr. Morrissey's question made me wonder, when you compare these other cities and their legal budget, is it possible that all of the different charges that go to the different department are brought into that total that you put in here? Yes, they by are. By city? 
Yeah. So we might not be quite as out of sync dollar wise. Um, it's just maybe they do more in house. I'm, I'm, I'm with Mr. Morris. It would be nice to try to have a comparable, and I'm not sure that you're right. That would be difficult to do, but I think there's some options there. Yeah, some I will say, I'm not aware of any city in Iowa that's not using one of the two uh, firms to do understand. bond issues and stuff. There's some things you, I just think. It, you're right. Wait, there's some that are specialized. specialized. Yes, for. I totally understand. I just want to try to compare apples to apples if yeah, we can. And, and I understand that we can't probably do that by August, but maybe we can can get somewhere where we have a full-time assistant um, and the full-time city attorney and then and and certainly Sherry and then explore what other options from there are possible. And, and some cities even have a full-time risk management assessment officer. You sure. know, they, and, and that's through their legal department. Yeah. So they're not practicing law per se, but they're keeping an eye on all the departments and yeah. all that type of and stuff. So understand. And, and that's the individuality of, of every particular yeah. city and the individuality of the particular um, legal department. Some, some lawyers are very versed in uh, property acquisition, and that may be their background. Some are maybe in negotiation. Some may be in a particular area, but depending upon who you get, they have a particular skill set. No lawyer has every skill set in one. So um, great conversation that will be coming before council. Mr. Foyce. Yeah. Just a quick question. So on the budget narrative, you asked there was the request for an assistant city attorney, but in the additional needs, there wasn't any allocation, correct? Correct. They didn't submit anything for a financial request. So okay. what I have done in the published level is I, I just added 200,000 and that's one of the things we can okay. talk about in the next week. I have added an additional 200,000 into the published level for the attorney's office if you want to do that. Okay, and then just to follow up with what uh, Mrs. Jones was talking about as far as the assistant city attorney, that person, I just, so I understand, you could see that person being the uh, code enforcement liaison, essentially, correct? Yes, I could. Okay. I, you know, like when I was two years out of law school when I first started here and just doing the, the prosecutions and the little stuff around and, and, and getting my feet wet, it's a great thing for a young attorney <clears throat> to do. And, and I, I could see counsel hiring somebody like that who under the you know, training and tutelage of an older person can, can really benefit the city. And do a lot of stuff that uh, you know, I, I've been doing for 40 years, and I enjoy it, but it's not exactly rocket science. I, I just saw Randy starting to get up and walk out the door when you suggested going to his department, and we just got him here, so I didn't want him to. I didn't want to go through another process, so yeah, I scared him to. So yeah, Woke him thank up. you. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, one more question, and we got to get to the budget portion. Almost maybe too late. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, I've, I've overlooked this. Uh, thank you very much. Dave Zellifer, for what you've done and your humor and your ability to not make it to golf dates when mm -hmm. you've been asked to because you're so dedicated to your job. And uh, so thank you very much for, for what you do and for your accessibility. I appreciate that very much. And for your astute legal stuff, too. So, And thank you as well, Steve Holmbrecker. I forgot to do that. And Mr. Mayor, for presentations. I forgot to include that. So. And, and, and Dave, for not taking everything personal, because I've been on council and uh, I've been a council member and I've been a mayor and we haven't always saw, seen eye to eye, <laughs> uh, but not taking it personal. But Well, if, if everybody sees eye to eye, it'd be a boring world. As long as we respect everybody and uh, we get along, that's the way to do it. All right. Uh, it, is, it is discussion of budget time. <laughs> I guess we late. just did. My budget discussion. you're talking about? Or no. Can no, I leave? No. Actually, it's time to start the Finance Committee, but we can All start right. late. <laughs> finance Committee is kind of short, so hopefully we have time. Yes. So. More paper. Yes. More paper. I love it. Everybody, 
So what I have just handed out is the little bit more detail for the budget that was published last Friday. And I did email everyone with what that levy rate was and what it included. But this, so this format is similar to what you already have seen for the base budget, but it adds in or makes all the changes that departments requested to get to the published budget. It's primarily the additional needs level with a few additions, and one of those additions was what we just talked about with the attorney's office. Unfortunately, it doesn't, it's not so much fun when you start looking at this budget. Um, you saw that the levy rate was $18.19. Um, and I, I know we don't have a lot of time, so I think I'm not going to start out going into a lot of detail. We can, one of the things I would propose if we have a work session tomorrow is we could spend more time discussing this and going through it. There, you should have gotten two reports. The second one goes through what changed from 19 to the published budget for fiscal 20. So that will show you all the increases and some decreases that have occurred to get from the 19 certified budget with that tax rate to the fiscal 20 published budget. And I, I don't know if we even want to try to talk about individual things right now. We just don't have time. So I, I mostly wanted to get this into your hands today and suggest that if we would have work session tomorrow, we, we would we could and then we'll discuss it further. To look at so Michelle, can you just explain each, each page sure. so that so they can take a look at it tonight? The second, the second item that was distributed to you, page one of that talks about the personnel changes only. So that will go through all the changes that were made. We roll up all the accounts in the general fund, and that explains the increases from 19 to 20. Page two then explains all the other expenses, the non-personnel changes. And again, this is just for the general fund at this point. And that was 508,000 is all general fund wide. And then page three, um, you can see on, on row 105, those are all the revenue changes. And the, the big change in there is that I've, at this point, removed the use of fund balance. So that re reduces the revenue that helps cut the tax levy substantially. Um, and you can see then that the total increase in taxes is 3067000 just shy of that. And at the bottom, I've added... At this point, I have a somewhat slight increase in the debt service levy of 105000 Plus, when we're reconciling our total taxes, because we added, we released TIF revenue and we had growth, both the Grout Museum levy and the Library Special levy will get more taxes. So you can see those two amounts I've added at the bottom. We have no control over that. They have to get those. But those are part of the reason the total tax collections would rise. So I have them down there just so you can see how we get to the total that taxes will go up if, if this rate is adopted, which I'm not proposing that it is. I'm just saying that's what we have in front of us today. So we can discuss that more tomorrow. And anything else, Mayor, that you'd like to mention today? Just really quick questions, that you, things that you want to know so that when you get home and you look at this information for tomorrow, you'll have it. So I have a really quick question. Yes, ma'am. The increase in debt service levy, that's the CIP money. That's the money that we go out and borrow, right? That is the money that we go out. That's What that is is your first year's mortgage payment on whatever we go out and borrow. It's also the mortgage payment on all the other debt we've borrowed in the last 15 but years. But we are indeed reducing more debt than we are incurring. Is that going to pay did, off more? We did last year. Um, I think that remains to be seen, if okay. that's what you're proposing to do for 2020. But this levy is based on us on the $10 million figure? Um, approximately. Okay. I've got a little flux in there right now that I okay. need to 
find but you're factoring in what you're going to pay off as well as yes okay thank you mrs klein my quick question is um since 1930 or 19 since 2000 <laughs> no i'm sorry since 2013 until now we have about 21 million dollars sitting in an account because it had been bonded for and brought in on SIP programs, but never spent. And I know that there are open projects that are, we're working toward, but also there are some of that money that's just really just sitting there. Can't we use that 20, some part or portion of that $21 million to reduce our SIP askings? Well, that's why when we start out the CIP meetings, we go through with every department their existing money and talk about how quickly they're gonna get that spent down because I, I do have a concern about that. All the projects that people submit in the CIP are probably needed or wanted, we all know that. But the reality is 15 months is a pretty short period of time to spend the new money plus that the older years money that's building up so that's part of the balancing act we need to be doing when we set the CIP I, I think sometimes you know our our eyes are bigger than our stomach so to speak yeah. and that's the hard to makes the decisions even harder there's no point in bonding if we can't get to the projects so. yeah it, I've just been trying to wrap my mind around it ever since Pat mentioned it at the library board um, I it's like if I and my husband went out to buy a new car and got a loan, started paying on that loan and didn't take possession of the car, but went out and got another loan for another car. Right. It, that, we're just bonding and borrowing. It, yes, and makes your finance department crazy. <laughs> so, I, I bet. It, I, so, yeah. I mean, 2013, we could go back and take that money and say you never really intended to use it. So now we're going to use it for something else. There, there are just things that happen that delay some projects and... It's sometimes it's just difficult, I guess, to guess right about which one's going to progress in the next 12 months. But that's what we just need to be taking a good hard look at right now. Right. Mr. So Mayor. we have we got to have take a new question yeah. and we can come back. Michelle, this is in here. These so are in here. The second report is the list of changes to get to what's on the first report. What's on here? Yes, okay. so the second report's a list of what changed from last year's certified to this published budget. And we're going over this tomorrow if we have a meeting tomorrow at five o'clock. Correct. Okay, thanks. And we do have a meeting posted for five o'clock tomorrow. I understand that. This is your and honor. I just have a question. I, I think some of us that have How had much a, of this debt lives in Waterloo? How much? <laughs> yeah, I think, no, that's Margaret's question. Unfortunately, uh, all the debt. <laughs> Give it away. No, I, I appreciate the fact that, that you and Mr. Anderson sit down with the departments and go through all this. So probably a lot of you've already determined. But but because this is maybe the first time I've really studied the CIP in any depth, I'd really appreciate it if one of our work sessions could go into the CIP in more detail, if that's possible. Yeah, it's, one so that's last my question. request. One last question, and that is, so this... Right here, this last one, the three pages, will, if you, it goes into here, and that makes the published rate 18.188. Correct. Yeah. Okay, thank you. If you right. look at that second report, you'll see at the top of it, I'll just explain that a little bit more. The very, the very first line is the taxes that we certified for 19 on page one. You see that at the top? Mm -hmm. So that's how I'm saying we're going from last year to this year. So then if you look at the taxes that are on row 114, that will match your first report. Go to page four, row 171, and it's the same number. So that's how you know those. that's all in there. So 170. Okay. See Thank what you. I'm. Yes. So this is so it's just breaking down and just taking them and putting the changes on this just, sheet. So, right. Okay. It's just making All right. the changes more clear. We hopefully. we got to do finance, um, pay some bills. Um, can we yeah. move to adjourn? Second. Motion been made. with second. All in favor? All right. We're adjourned. Okay. <laughs>
welcome to the Waterloo City Council Finance Committee. Roll call, please. Mr. Jacobs? Here. Mr. Morris? Here. Mrs. Jewin? Here. Motion to approve the agenda and the minutes of February 18th, 2019 is proposed. Second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Someone take the travel request, please. Madam Chairperson, we have two travel requests tonight. Leanne Evan, Deputy City Clerk, to attend the Iowa Municipal Finance Officers Association Spring Conference in Des Moines, April 10th through 12th of 2019, amount not to exceed $400. Krista Rural, artist, to attend the Gallery Talk Reception, Waterloo, Iowa, from Goshen, Indiana, February 28th through March 2nd, amount not to exceed $205. Second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Madam Chairperson. Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to approve the following pre authorizations expending over $1,000. First is building maintenance with the amount estimated. Oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Okay. A mountain estimated shipping handling $1,552.79 plus $140 shipping handling for a tool box drawer for building maintenance truck. Next is engineering with mountain estimated shipping handling $13,399 for a 44-inch large format scanner slash plotter. Next is a fire department with mountain estimated shipping handling $1,345. Dollars and fifty cents for fire codes online from 331 2019 to 331 2020. Next is Hazmat with the Mountain Estimated Shipping Handling $136 per month for 60 month lease of Rico IMC 300 color copier. Next is Leisure Services with the Mountain Estimated Shipping Handling $4,041 and a nickel for installation of window coverings at South Hills Golf Course, including commercial roller shades and tint on all south wall windows. Next is the sewer department, Mountain Estimated Shipping Handling, $4,659.47 for installation of 14-inch double wall metal vent stack on boiler two. And finally, the traffic department with the Mountain Estimated Shipping Handling of $3,098.94 plus $100 shipping and handling for two Valmont aluminum light poles with 15-foot luminaire arm. Second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Would someone take the other committee business, please? Madam Chairperson, other committee business tonight. Request permission to seek bids and sell the highest bidder ash tree logs that were moved due to the emerald ash borer infestation. Refund request for garbage collection fees paid on a vacant property located at 114 Arden Street in the amount of $94.50. Refund request for 132 Cornwall Avenue for duplicate yard waste container fees paid totaling $79.50. Refund request for garbage collection fees paid while contracting with the private hauler for property located at 1118 Jefferson Street in the amount of $511.50. Lastly, refund request for garbage collection fees paid while contracted with a private hauler for properties located at 314 to 320 Johnson Street in the amount of $250.60. Second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And finally, for bill payment um, in the amount of $1,277,062.50. As stated in the accounts payable dated February 25th, 2019. Move to receive, place on the file, and forward to the full council. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. All right.
uh, this evening to our city council meeting on Monday, February 25th. Madam Clerk, could you please read the roll? Mr. Jacobs? Here. Mr. Morris? Here. here. Mr. Foyce? Here. Mrs. Klein? Here. Mr. Amos? Here. Mr. Schmidt? Mrs. Jewin? Here. All right, thank you. As you are aware, uh, uh, Councilman Amos is joining us via telephone, and Councilman Schmidt did email today uh, to indicate that he would not be with us this uh, evening as well. So he sends his regards. Uh, I'd like to ask that you would all join me right now in a moment of silence. Thank you. Uh, the pledge this evening will be led by Kelly Felkley, City Clerk. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Motion to approve the agenda as presented. Second. And the minutes. That must be that look that Dave, <laughs> Dave, that Dave, that Dave said I give and I just look at you. You did. I can feel your eyes boring into me. All right. We have a motion to approve the agenda and the minutes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. We have an agenda. Uh, it's now time for oral presentations. Uh, your opportunity to come to the uh, podium and to tell us what's on your thoughts and what's on your mind. So uh, come up, state your name and address, and you get three minutes in the sunshine. Hi, Mayor. Hi, Council. You get a reprieve tonight, Mayor. David's gone. Anyway, uh, uh, I see well, that. Uh, I didn't say that, so. I, <laughs> I see we got a, uh, another ordinance on the agenda tonight to vote on. And I was just kind of curious that I was, and you were there too, Mayor Hart, when we voted on uh, uh, Newsom property. Uh, nuisance. Uh, we were going to, after three times, the officer. Uh, would go to a certain residence uh, it's a new, would be considered a nuisance property and he would get a letter from the chief to say how he was going to bait it and I think it was like a $300 fine. Is this an ordinance we're going to add tonight that's going to be enforceable? Do we enforce the one that we put in on the nuisance property? That's really the one I'm after. All right. The nuisance property. So you're you want uh, have to know, we, are we enforcing the current nuisance and, and, property? Yeah, and, and where do we stand on that one? I mean, all we right. add ordinances, but do we enforce them? That's we, all I mean. We are, we're going to answer the question for the property nuisance ordinance. So, Chief, could you let us know if we're enforcing that? And, sir, could you state your name and address for the record? Because you're not David Dreyer. Oh, Jim Chapman, Jim, Jim Chapman, 224 Birch. All right. Dan Trelka, Chief of Police. Uh, we, are in, we are enforcing the chronic property ordinance. Uh, pro we've probably had about 100 property, properties that have fallen under it that we've taken action against. The vast majority of them, they've provided abatement plans and resolved the problem. Uh, probably about 10 of them have received citations. Okay. Has All it right. slowed Thank down? You. Has the property nuisance slowed down? We will um, ask this last question, but yep. uh, are we seeing a change overall? In we are. It's, it appears that it's very effective. Yep. Um, and I know sometimes in cases uh, there's newsprint um, and other things to get the word out to folks that whatever you're doing on your properties, you need to do the best that you can to ensure uh, public safety and public good on those properties too. So we thank Mr. Jameson for his reporting as well on some of these issues. Uh, thank you, Chief. I got 27 seconds. I was just gonna say, I hope we ain't adding another news uh, ordinance that we ain't gonna enforce. That's all I was looking for. 
Thank you. I'm going to have to have a talk after the meeting. <laughs> uh, is there anyone else that would uh, have some comments for the council? Going a second time, is that one of the city council, you city council members back there? Okay. All right. Mr. Mayor. Do you have a comment? I do. Yeah. Yep. Sorry. All right. I just want to make sure. Since I haven't done it before, I just didn't want to speak out of turn. So <clears throat> I had the chance, uh, for those that didn't, haven't followed the news, Lowell Elementary, you know, lost part of their roof. And uh, so I spent today, uh, got about uh, 10, 12 volunteers to help them uh, set up their rooms. And uh, uh, so it was really an experience. If you've never been in, uh, as a former elementary classroom, getting your room set up at the beginning of the year, uh, that sometimes takes a week or two weeks to be able to do uh, for these, uh, you know, men and women to do that in, in essentially two days in the middle of a school year. Was, I didn't see anybody upset. I didn't see any, all I saw a lot of just people that wanted to get back to a routine. The winter hasn't been, uh, hasn't aided any of that at, at all. So, um, you know, I just wanted to, to give a shout out to uh, the Waterloo School District and to Central Rivers AEA for helping provide a, a spot so they didn't get displaced. They get to be all in one roof. And uh, so I, just kudos to everybody. Right. Thanks. And we're very thankful, you know, no children yeah. uh, were in the building as well. So uh, very thankful. And we did have ongoing conversation as things were taking place. So. Uh, thankful for the uh, superintendent for yep. letting us know what was happening. Uh, any other comments? Okay, motion to close the hearing, receive comments, and place on file. Second. That motion is made with a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Okay, motion to receive the consent agenda, receive, place on file, with the addition of, to number 1A1. Um, in the amount of one million two hundred and seventy-seven thousand sixty-two dollars and eighty-one cents. Second. Eighty-two cents. Eighty-one cents. Eighty-one cents. All right. Uh, that motion has been made with the second. Uh, Madam Clerk. Mr. Jacobs. Yes. Mr. Morrissey. Yes. Mr. Foyce. Yes. Mrs. Klein. Yes. Mr. Amos. Yes. Mr. Schmidt. Oh, sorry. Mrs. Jewin. Yes. All right, thank you. Hopefully everybody was called off. Um, someone take number two, please. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to receive and file proof of publication of notice of public hearing on a request by Dan Hillman on behalf of Gene Waldemeyer for a rezone of approximately 2.149 acres from M1 Light Industrial District and M2 Heavy Industrial District to M2 Heavy Industrial District for future redevelopment at 94 to 98 Vinton Street. Can we get a second, someone? I'm sorry. Second. Sorry. <laughs> the, the man on the telephone had to second that. <laughs> All right. Uh, that motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? All right. The hearing is now open. Is there anyone in the audience that may have some questions or conversations or comments about uh, this particular item? Going a second time? Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to close the hearing and receive and file the recommendation of approval of the Planning, Programming, and Zoning Commission. Second. That motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. The hearing is closed. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to receive, file, consider, and pass for the first time an ordinance amending. Ordinance number 5079 is amended City of Waterloo Zoning Ordinance by amending the official zoning map referred to in Section 10-4-4, approving a rezone of certain property located at 94th and 98 Vinton Street. Second. All right. You got beat that time, Councilman Amos. <laughs> <laughs> that motion has been made with a second. Council questions? Madam Clerk? Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Foyce? Yes. Mrs. Klein? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mrs. Jewin? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. All right. Thank you. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules. Second. That motion has been made with a second. Mr. Anderson? Bill Anderson, Community Planning and Development Director. Um, and I believe Mr. Hillman and Mr. Waltimer are in the audience um, if you want to hear from them as well. But I believe they would like the council to suspend the rules. They are trying to uh, 
sell the property for a project and they're trying to move along this time frame to put this uh, zoning over the entire portion of the property. All right. Uh, are there, uh, two people mentioned in the audience. Uh, would you like to speak to that? Um, and what we do um, uh, before we suspend the rules and do the second and third readings, uh, we just want to make sure, you know, the timeliness of the situation before we decide whether or not to do that. And no, have we had any objections at all from anyone about this or folks planning, planning voted? Correct. Planning voted to uh, unanim unanimously approve it and there were no, no objections. Okay. Yes, sir. Can you state your name? Uh, just for uh, the my record. name is Dan Hillman. I'm an owner broker at Four Seasons here in Waterloo, Iowa. Okay. Um, is there a time you need to move pretty quickly or? There is. We've had the property for sale for quite some time, three or four years now, and we do have a project that they do want to hit the ground running. Uh, there's the ones that have asked us to expedite this process, and, and uh, right now there's a letter of intent. It, it seems solid. We're going forward. Actually, in doing, in, during their due diligence, they discovered this zoning problem that we did not even know existed, that half of the building, or three-fourths of the property, was M2, so they were the ones that discovered it and asked for us to get a resolve so they could continue. Okay. All right. All right. <clears throat> uh, thank you, sir. Not hit the yep. ground running, hit the ground skating. <laughs> hit right the ground skating, yes. All right. Um, yes, thank you. Yes, sir. I, I just wanted uh, just to make a point of information that with Mr. or Councilman Schmidt uh, missing, I, I guess he automatically is counted as a no vote. So just one of us uh, here would stop this from moving to a suspension. Well, I think I think also though it, it depends. Uh, it's dependent upon whether or not someone was here or not. So um, you know, so one one no vote would mm -hmm. uh, delay it for another week. So thank you for uh, keeping us aware of that. But um, um, Madam Clerk, Mr. Foyce, yes. Mrs. Klein, yes. Mr. Amos, yes. Mrs. Jewin, yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. We got one more left. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion and consider and pass for the second and third times and adopt said ordinance. Second. A motion has been made with the second. Madam Clerk? Mrs. Klein? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mrs. Jewin? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Foyce? Yes. All right. Thank you. Uh, so if you... You got the zoning change, so thank you, sir. Uh, could someone take three, four, and five, please? Mr. Mayor. Mrs. Klein. Number three is a resolution approving a professional service agreement with RJN located in Des Moines, Iowa, in the amount of $19,955 for the evaluation of the east-west interceptor manholes and authorize the mayor to execute said document. Number four is a resolution approving a professional service agreement with Red Zone Robotics, Inc. of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, in the amount of $117,615 in conjunction with evaluation of approximately 20,622 feet of 48-inch, 60-inch interceptor sewer pipes and authorize the mayor to execute said document. And number five is a resolution approving a professional services agreement with AECOM Technical Services in the amount not to exceed $49,500 in conjunction with the 2019 or 2019 West 5th Street parking ramp and Commercial Street parking ramp repairs and authorize the mayor to execute said document. Second. <laughs> that motion has been made with the second. Uh, any comments or questions about these items? Madam Clerk. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mrs. Jewin? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Foyce? Yes. Mrs. Klein? Yes. All right, thank you. Six, seven, and eight, please. I'll take. Mrs. Struan. Yes. Resolution approving the assignment of rebates to Reese Properties LLC in conjunction with a development agreement with Endeavors LTC LLC, originally approved on July 29th, 2015, for the property located at 2661. Geraldine Road and authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute said agreement. Okay. 
motion approving the final quarter quantity summary for a net decrease of $54,273.41 for the fiscal year 2017 site grading for Northeast Industrial Park, contract number 926, and authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute said document. Resolution approving completion of project and recommendation of acceptance of work for work performed by Peterson Contractors, Inc. of Rhinebeck, Iowa, at a total cost of $964,105.79 for the fiscal year 2017 site grading for Northeast Industrial Park, contract number 926 and receive and file a two-year maintenance bond. Second. All right, that motion has been made with the second. Uh, is there anyone with particular comments on six, seven, and eight? Council? Madam Clerk? Mrs. Jewin? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Foyce? Yes. Mrs. Klein? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. All right, thank you. Uh, 9, 10, and 11. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Number nine is a resolution approving award of bid to Boulder Contracting LLC of Grundy Center, Iowa, in the amount of $334,269 and approving the contract bonds and certifi certifi certificate of insurance in conjunction with the FY 2019 bridge repairs to Buke Road over Blowers Creek and Green Hill Road over Trolley Car Trail, contract number 959, and authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute said documents. 10 is a resolution approving application with the Iowa Governor's Tra Traffic Safety Bureau for a Highway Safety Program grant for a period of October 1st, 2019 to September 30th, 2020. And 11, a resolution approving support of the proposal to transfer budget authority from multiple HUD projects in Iowa to Exceptional Persons, Inc. for the provision of housing assistance in Waterloo. Second. All right. Thank you. Um, anyone in the audience with questions? I have a question. Council? I would like just an overview of number 11 and why we're transferring it to exceptional persons. All right. Okay. And nobody wants to answer that. Um, is Deb in the audience? All yep. Right. Good evening. I'm Deb Jungling, the CFO of Exceptional Persons. Can you give us the address? Okay. Um, 760 Ainsboro. Okay. Uh, she wants to know about why are we transferring uh, the budget authority? The There are two other projects in Iowa, one in Hampton and one in Rock Valley, who have chosen to discontinue their contracts with HUD. That makes the budget authority available for transfer. Um, exceptional persons is on the list indicating interest in accepting such transfers and therefore we were contacted by HUD to see if we would be interested in accepting this budget authority. So it would bring um, up to 37 units of assistance to the Waterloo area. And we needed to approve this, why? Is HUD looks for approval of the local governing body that, that you're in support okay. of accomplishing this transfer. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. So how many, are the units, are they all across? Or are we looking at like one area of town in particular? No, they are all across the city. Okay. Thank throughout. You. And you already have those properties lined up? We do. Okay. They are properties that are owned by exceptional persons. Already? Already. And they are ready for occupancy. So they have tenants. The uh, tenants who are suggested, the properties that are listed, include those that are eligible for HUD assistance. So they would receive the benefit of this assistance. Yeah. Okay. Um, Madam Clerk, uh, 9, 10, and 11. Mr. Mayor, can I ask a quick question, please? Yes, sir. On number nine, just to make sure the bids do vary quite a bit once again, have we made sure that that bid is appropriate in the scope of this project? Uh, Knudsen. Jamie Knutson, city engineer. Yeah, we did go through the bids, everything checked out. Um, Boulder Contracting has done two previous bridge projects for us. They do excellent work and uh, don't expect any issues with this. Thank you. All right, thank you. Yeah, that was that one that was what? 
Double it. Yeah, 400,000 more. Okay. All right. If we can keep getting bids like that the entire time, we'll be good. <laughs> All right. Madam Clerk. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Foyce? Yes. Mrs. Klein? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mrs. Juin? Yes. All right. Thank you. Number 12, please. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? I'd like to make a motion to receive, file, consider, and pass for the first time an ordinance amending the City of Waterloo Code of Ordinances by amending Title V police regulations by adding a new Chapter 6 chronic nuisance vehicles. Second. All right. That motion has been made with the second. Uh, any questions from anyone in the audience? Council, any questions? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Morrissey. Uh, if Chief Trauka could go over this again. Chief, if you want to revisit, give us a... Uh, the, uh, Dan Trelka, uh, Chief of Police. Uh, this basically mimics our chronic nuisance property ordinance, which has been very successful. Uh, this turns up the heat a little bit on vehicles that are out there routinely and on a regular basis violating our traffic laws by running red lights and speeding and our cameras are catching them. Uh, every time a person gets one of these or receives one of these violations, the uh, registered owner is duly notified through the U.S. mail and uh, once they get three of these violations, we're going to have an officer visit their house if it's their first violation, we're going to cite them for $100, uh, a second violation, $200. But if any one of the violations is for speeding 20 miles per hour over the limit, the fine amount's going to be $300. And if they want to contest this citation, they can contest it in our, uh, at the county courthouse. Yes, sir. So what happens if they refuse to cooperate? Be if they don't pay, right, uh, we can uh, suspend their registration. They can lose their license. Uh, several different actions can be taken. And, and chief, this is an action against the vehicle, the vehicle owner, the vehicle owner. But it's okay, triggered for by that vehicle. It. Yes. Okay. It's, it, so it wouldn't carry over to another vehicle that that same person is driving. No. No. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Sorry, Mr. Uh, Chief Trucka, just because I can read it, but I don't know for the people at home, I, it talks about the, the automatic traffic citations, but that's not the only way that they can be deemed a chronic nuisance, correct? Uh, we also, we're going to start the process where officers can, uh, when they make contact with people, if uh, they're... Uh, if they're not suspended or if they're not driving while intoxicated, uh, the officers can also cite under the similar process as our traffic cameras. Those violations will fall under this as well. But we haven't received the equipment or the training okay. for doing that uh, enforcement action. So if somebody had three speeding tickets in a year, then they could receive this chronic vehicle nuisance, correct? Uh, not a regular speeding ticket. If it's Because uh, uh, the Over state will take action against them for those okay. violations. Okay. Just wanted to clarify that. And then for any... Um, vehicle owner who is not a Waterloo or Blackhawk County resident, what happens to them? We will still have a process and a way to serve them. Okay. If it's outside the county, I'm willing to send Waterloo police officers outside the city of Waterloo to issue these citations. If they're outside Blackhawk County, we will contact that county's law enforcement agency to issue the citation. And that's legal? Yes. Okay. You're going to Florida, let me know. <laughs> Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Chief Troca, just a follow-up question to you then. So if a lot of these vehicles, or a lot of us parents um, that own vehicles and our kids drive, um, let's say that they're a chronic speeder. Um, I guess the thinking is the officer would meet with me, tell me to um, speak with my child to make sure that we, we, we deal with the situation appropriately, but I would be responsible, not my child, right? Correct. However, in the process where you were uh, given notification of the violation, the first, second, and third violation, uh, it, the vehicle's registered you, but you could uh, uh, reassign liability for that violation. There's a process to do that. So you've, oh, okay. you will have had the opportunity three times to let us know who is driving the car. 
Thank you. Ultimately, you're the registered owner. We're going to hold you accountable. Yeah, I understand. Tell on, tell on your child. <laughs> well, I... Oh, God. Great. Mr. Foyts. I, I blanked. I, I forgot my question. Mr. I'm sorry. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Or, uh, Chief Tralka, the uh, money that's taken, received, where does it go? For this violation? Yes. It For comes back to our general fund. A it goes to the it. general fund. Yes. Is it that two-year moratorium? Not for these violations, but uh, for the traffic camera violations, yes. They go into the uh, two-year moratorium fund. For, for the other ones, but not Correct. for this one. Yes, sir. So this will go directly into general Yes, general revenue. That's, I believe that's the, uh, the, it, the, it'll be the same mechanism that's utilized for the regular citations. Okay, thank you. What, what question? Because this question. is a um, yeah uh, a camera enforcement, right? So wouldn't it still go to the the two year or whatever that fund is because it's a camera enforcement? Because it's camera enforcement v speed, mm -hmm. and then we have it. So are those two? No, it'll be uh, just like when our code enforcement officers issue a citation. It'll be the same process that's utilized. Uh, for us recovering the funds from those violations. Confused. But the camera ticket money. All right, let's say somebody gets that first speeding citation from a camera, mm -hmm. they pay the $75, that's held for two years. But they rack up three violations. Oh, okay, I see what yeah. you're saying. Okay, so the, the fines go towards, okay, yeah. okay, I get it. Sorry about that. Um, yes, ma'am. Did I have a question? Okay, well, I have a question and kind of a comment. Um, is there anything in place for the owner who does not receive that in the mail? My, my question comes from personal experience. We had four boys and three girls, and when we pulled the front steps off our house to replace them, we found all kinds of hidden mail that the kids had gotten to before us. <laughs> <laughs> Grades, tickets. <laughs> and it was just amazing. How much parents don't know. So is there any kind of a thing for... Any violation or any ordinance that law enforcement officers enforce, we have discretion. Uh, if that's the excuse that's provided when the officer makes contact, that, something like that's a pretty good excuse. Yeah, but when the officer know what I didn't know. <laughs> pays them that personal visit, then they'll be duly advised that there's an issue. Thanks. <laughs> All right, any other? Yes, sir. Okay, so I just want to go back because I think some of us, like me, may be confused. So with the, as we're looking at the violations and penalties, that $100 and $200, <coughs> that, that just goes back in, that has the two-year moratorium? It does not. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the, so, so that, 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 uh, that money is on, so the, you get three of the camera citations. <laughs> Then there's a hundred dollar, hundred dollar fine for that. So that's it's it's not it's almost a fourth chance. Pardon, I mean, right? Yes, that's I a mean, good way to describe it. Yeah, yeah our typical violation amount for uh, the camera tickets is seventy five bucks. Uh, that each one of those seventy five dollars goes into the two year fund. Uh, once we hit them with that one hundred, two hundred, or three three hundred dollar, that. Uh, goes through the normal processes and it's not held under the two years. Mr. Morrissey. Uh, Chief Trollka, um for this to be proposed as an ordinance, it would indicate that uh, you or the people in the police department have seen that this would, this, this is something that's needed <coughs> to stop habitual violators? Yes, we wanna have a, we wanna modify people's driving behavior. And I think this is going to be, I mean, it, this, a similar ordinance has worked so well with chronic nuisance properties. Uh, I, I anticipate it's going to work well with vehicles as well. Okay. And you're going to be keeping statistics of this that I you sure. could bring back to us and yes, sir. let us know yep. like in a year or so, you know, what the numbers are in that. Yep. So. Uh, by my latest uh, review of vehicles or registered owners, about almost 50 vehicles or registered owners fall under that we could if this was if i could utilize this tonight i could cite about 50 people okay 
That was my next question. Thank you. Any yes, other questions, Ms. Joan? Yeah, just clarify for me, these three violations are whether they're automated traffic citations or hand-delivered ones by the officer, right? Not necessarily. There's the regular state citation or state type citation we can issue. Uh, the council also passed an ordinance uh, within the past year uh, where we can utilize the same, if the officer can make contact at the door and use the same process for enforcing some of our traffic laws that we use with the cameras. That we don't have to send to the state. Correct. But so this is camera. Yes. Primarily. Primarily camera. camera. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Can I ask one follow up? One more. I apologize. So no, you're fine. the first offense, uh, the initial offense is for the three. And then when you get to each repeat offense, is there three more or is it on it's three, you get the initial offense. And then if you read, you know, you go through the automated traffic camera, you get the 75 and the 200. It, it's a reset. Uh, reset. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. What one? Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. Sorry, <clears throat> Chief. Uh, Okay, so does the state have anything similar to this? And, you know, if there's a vehicle that uh, is at issue, is there any at any time where there's an impoundment of the vehicle or taking uh, that vehicle off the street? Uh, we haven't gone that far. Uh, and uh, I'll have two answers for that. The state does have something similar. They'll designate you as a habitual traffic offender and uh, suspend your license. Uh, for towing, we, we haven't gone that deep yet, that far. Uh, we won't tow, not at this point. Okay. And if you're a habitual offender with the state, you can go to jail too, right? Correct, correct. And you know, my theory is uh, if you're that bad of a driver, Eventually, an officer is going to be stopping you. As a matter of fact, I, uh, we, the guy that was going 96, then he was going 81, uh, I put his name and vehicle description out to the officers, and they're looking for him right now. They're going to be, if they come across that car speeding, there's not going to be much discretion. They're going to be issuing citations because uh, uh, his driving in our community is extremely reckless, in my opinion. One final thing, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> just, just say one more because there may be another one. Okay. <laughs> one more. Yes, Chief, sir. Did, did you want, did you feel a need for these to, this to be suspended? No. Okay. And um, if just really quickly, um, not to dwell on the negative, but last year was really a, a challenging year with regards to uh, fatalities from some of these traffic traffic accidents as well. If I'm not mistaken. It was. Yes, sir. All right. All right. Any other questions? Sure. <laughs> All right. Madam Clerk, first reading. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Foyce? Yes. Mrs. Klein? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mrs. Jewin? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. All right. Thank you. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules. Can somebody at least oh, second? Oh, second, sorry. All right, <laughs> second so you can vote no if you want. All right, uh, motion to spin the rules has been seconded. Madam Clerk. Mr. Foyce? No. Mrs. Klein? No. Mr. Amos? No. Mrs. Jewin? No. Mr. Jacobs? No. Mr. Morrissey? No. All right, thank you. We'll pick that up next week. Number 13, please. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to receive file consent and pass for the second time an ordinance amending the City of Waterloo Code of Ordinances by amending Title VI Motor Vehicles and Traffic, Chapter 1, Traffic Code, Section 4, Automated Traffic Enforcement. All right. Thank you, Mr. Amos, once again for <laughs> coming through for us. All right. This is the second time we've had this ordinance. Uh, is there any discussion from the audience or council? All right. He jumped up quickly on that one. <laughs> Jerry Hegeman, 3052 San Salvador Drive in Waterloo. I just want to say I'm, uh, I know uh, a lot of people are not in favor of this, but I do walk a lot and I see, uh, well, back when I worked for the phone company recently, I used to see people running red lights and speeding quite often. And now that I walk, I see people running down 9th Street at, at least at 50 miles an hour. So I personally just am in favor of this, of any kind of automated enforcement, especially if it helps our general fund and can maybe do something about our crumbling 
roads and whatever. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. John Sherbin, 1715 Robin Road. I just had a question because I've had some people ask me. Um, is the city employees, do they get tickets if they're caught on the cameras for red light running or speeding or any city employees? Or And I've also heard Cedar Rapids doesn't write for semi-trucks necessarily, but do, what all do we write for? You've been Thank following you. me. <laughs> <laughs> Chief. City employees in their personal vehicles do get citations. If they're city vehicles, we make a department heads aware of it and let them handle it. But if they become a, a serial offender, they will be cited. All right, thank you. Any other questions? Madam? Oh, sorry. Chief, can I have Chief? Yes, sir. Sorry. Should have grabbed you before you walked all the way back. <clears throat> so I, I've had a, questions from from citizens about the the revenue generated and that this seems to just be a, a revenue source for the city how, how would you respond to that from the very beginning when we initiate this program we haven't denied that these generate revenue however we want to have an impact on safety even a regular traffic ticket generates revenue uh, for the state for the city uh, Revenue is the residual effect of tickets. We want to have a positive impact on safety. And, and where are these placed at uh, with regards to, not, I mean, you don't have to give the location, but I mean, why are they placed in the locations oh. they are? Actually, I, I was going to name the location because it's good for people to know. And we have signs. Wherever these are, there are signs. I can't remember all the intersections off the top of my head, but uh, Sixth and Washington is one. Uh, they're placed where we have statistics that show we have crashes due to red light violations. So we're, as a matter of fact, the, state, the rules the state are considering, we're already complying by them. What, what, do, you, what do you mean by that? Sorry. Uh, the state, uh, the one option that I think is going to be successful at the state is they're going to regulate them. And they simply want justification why you're using the, these tools in certain areas of the city. And uh, we've got a strong case for justifying where we're placing these red light cameras. And with the uh, speed enforcement cam, this uh, mobile speed enforcement cameras, uh, you wouldn't believe how many citizens requested in their neighborhood. Yeah, I've seen that. So um, would more you know, officers out on the street help curb some of this, do you feel? It would as well. But I think Waterloo has a good combination of tools to uh, effectively and efficiently provide law enforcement services for our community. Uh, I'm proud of the fact that we're spending less than $200 per resident per year to provide law enforcement cities uh, uh, services in the state of Iowa. Uh, we're lower than all of the other seven cities that I like to compare us to, Des Moines, Davenport, Cedar Rapids, Sioux City. Uh, <clears throat> by far the lowest. I think in Des Moines they're paying $380 per resident per year for law enforcement services. We give a good bang for the buck and this is part of that. All right, Mrs. Klein. Um, just to answer that, because I had someone last night call me and say it's just a revenue grab. Well, that person has had a ticket based on all this. And I, I said, I don't, I don't agree with you. We've asked people not to speed. Then we, we put up signs everywhere, you know, don't speed, this is the limit, but they speed. Just on the way here tonight, just coming on the highway by Ainsboro cutoff, two cars were chasing each other and they blew by a semi, they blew by me, ice everywhere. Now, there's just a lack of thought there, don't you think? So I, I'm all for hit them in the pocketbook and then slow them down. We won't ticket you if you don't speed. All right. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Morrissey. Chief Troll. Sorry. Two questions. First of all, I've heard uh, th this comment from uh, different people who will go nameless, but that if you have all these set up, then can't you reduce the number of police, uh, period? 
because they're not you're gonna not gonna need as many because they're not handing out these kind of tickets. How do you respond to that? No, uh, there are types of enforcement. Parking enforcement is a good example. Drunk driving enforcement. We need to keep constant pressure on these type of violations to truly be effective and maintain that effectiveness. Okay, and would would this help out with enforcement of the fireworks? ordinance that was just passed? Whew, uh, maybe. Uh, these cameras were, uh, they'll probably be instrumental in the sexual assault investigation we're conducting because it occurred in the area of one of our cameras. We should actually have the suspect on one of these cameras in the area. So it's going to help enhance and uh, improve our investigation. Good investigation anyway, good solid <laughs> investigation. I'm confident we're going to get a a conviction, but this uh, this case is going to be a good example of where one of these cameras were very useful for a criminal prosecution. Okay, and then, like, are you you're keeping are you keeping statistics on this, or is the traffic department is yes. Mohammed doing that? Who's doing? Who's keeping stats on this? I am. Uh, okay. What's nice about this program is all the statistics are kept by the company, right. so I can readily access them. They're internet based. So whatever statistics I need, uh, I can readily access them. So you have a baseline for these different intersections where you're putting these that shows the number of problems that have been at conflicts at that intersection, regardless of what they were. And over time, say a year, year and a half from now, you'll be able to compare that baseline with where things are at and hopefully you'll see an improvement. Yes, yes. And uh, we may not necessarily need cameras at, uh, like, uh, six intersections, 13 cameras right now. I say 13 cameras because at one intersection, there's only one camera, uh, Baltimore and Williston, uh, because that's the direction where the problem was. Uh, at other intersections, we may have two, we may have three. The intersection could improve to the point where we remove the cameras, and we'll evaluate if they're needed at other intersections then. Okay. It, well, could you make sure that the council has access and sees those results? Yes, sir, you bet. Okay, thank you. Mrs. Juwan. Yeah, quick question. This is, again, like the the other um, automatic automatic light, uh, enforcement that we've had that an outside company is going to be monitoring it for us and issuing it. Yes. And so the same thing with the, um, the red light, the money will go into that two-year holding cell for a while yes. and property taxes, yes. right? Okay. Yeah, and uh, again, what this ordinance here that you're considering allows us to do is uh, speed enforcement from our red light cameras. Okay. Yes, Mayor. Yes, sir. Uh, I, want to, I want to thank uh, Chief Trelka for doing this, and um, I hope no one sees this as a, as a tool or mechanism to cut our police staff. This allows our police, it frees them up to do many other things that they need to do, and uh, if you don't believe me, um, feel free to um, schedule yourself a ride along and you can find out just how busy they are on a, on a shift. The um, other comment I want to just make, um, this actually uh, happened to me. Um, I actually got a ticket in the mail. Um, so thank you, Chief. Appreciate that. Um, however, um, the reason it was a good thing is that um, this helps us with our kids because even though I own the car, uh, it was actually being driven by one of my children. And uh, so it helps us keep an eye on our kids a little bit. And I was able then to have a conversation and say, you know, uh, we need to slow down. And uh, if this is what the speed limit is, that's what you're gonna do. So it's, it's actually a safety check, as we know, uh, based on insurance rates and studies that um, most accidents um, that are made are made by younger drivers, and I think that's pretty much a fact. So I think it's a good thing to kind of help us be safer on our roads. All right. Thank you. Uh, Madam Clerk, number 13 for Mrs. the second Klein? order. Mrs. Klein? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mrs. Jewin? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morris? Yes. Mr. Poise? Yes. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules. Motion should be made with the second, Madam Clerk. There was no second? Second. The second? Okay, thank you. So we have a motion to suspend the rules, Madam Clerk. Mr. Amos? No. Mrs. Jewin? No. 
Mr. Jacobs? No. Mr. Morris? No. Mr. Foyce? No. Mrs. Klein? No. All right, thank you. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion to be made with second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're adjourned. Thank you, Jerome. I mean, Mr.